Welcome to lecture number 16 for ECE 321 Analog Electronics. This lecture we're going to look at multi-stage amplifiers. Now as a recap, the previous lectures looked at the common emitter, common base, and common collector amplifier. The common emitter had a high input impedance, a high gain, and a fairly high output impedance. Common base had a low input impedance, um, that's useful if you want to have a low input impedance, say driving a phonograph. The common collector has a low output impedance. That's for each stage. What happens when you start cascading these amplifiers? So let's start out with the common emitter, common emitter. So this circuit right here looks rather intimidating. It's actually not all that bad. If you look at it, here's one common emitter amplifier isolated from the rest of the world by capacitors. Here's another common emitter amplifier, isolated from the world by capacitors. The input of this one's at the base, the emitter's tied to ground, output's at the collector in common emitter. Second stage, input's at the base, emitter's tied to ground, output's at the collector. So I've got two common emitter amplifiers cascaded. This is where the two port models really shine. This circuit is kind of intimidating to look at, intimidating to analyze. If I were to replace each stage with this two-port model, it's not nearly as bad. So let's do that. Replace the first stage with this common emitter model. Replace the second stage with this common emitter model. And notice this is way easier to understand than this circuit. That's why we use two-port models. It really helps in analyzing multi-stage amplifiers. Now that I have this, let's find the two-port model of the overall system. And kind of obviously, looking in, what I see is 605 ohms. So the two-port model is going to look like this. At the input, I just have 605 ohms. Uh, the output impedance. To find R out, I set the input to zero. So I'll short this to ground. That makes this zero volts, that makes this zero volts, makes this zero volts. At the output, all I see is 1K. So that's the, the output resistance. The gain, the way you find the gain is you apply one volt at the input and see how much voltage you get at the output. So if I apply one volt right here, what you get is this is one volt. Now, this is the one you got to work for. This is minus 230 volts by voltage division. It is negative 86.69 volts. Times minus 230 gives you 19, 940 volts. That's the output voltage. So that must be A out. This is 19,940 V in. So there's the two-port model of two cascaded common emitter amplifiers. And note this is kind of what the bread and butter amplifier is, the common emitter. Each common emitter amplifier adds a gain of, let's see, this is about a third of 230, about a gain of 80. So every common emitter amplifier I add adds 80 to the gain. Keep amplifying by 80. Eventually the signal will be large enough. So they have something small, like a radio signal. I can amplify it quite a bit just using common emit emitter amplifiers. That's your bread and butter amplifier. In Circuit Lab, I could test. Here's my two stage common emitter amplifier. Here's my input. There's my output. Let's start with the output being 10 mega ohms and the input being uh, 1 microvolt. If I do that, measure the output voltage. Let's see, what did I do? So the input is actually 0.1 millivolt, 0.1 millivolt. 
measure the output, the output's 1.34 volts. Then the gain is output over input, 1.34 over 0.1 millivolt. The gain is 13,400. A little different than, than what I calculated, because again, for the common emitter amplifier, the gain is beta RC over RF. The RF is determined by the Q point. The Q point's slightly different because um, beta is only 150 for these amplifiers. I assume 200. Beta's different, so the gain's different. So likewise, A out will be a little bit different. It's similar. 13,000 versus 19,000. Yeah, you know, same ballpark. That's to find the output impedance. To find the output or the output gain. To find the output impedance, I'll change this to 1k resistor and see how much the output drops. When I do that, it drops from 1.34 volts down to 689 millivolts. What that means, again, go back to the two-port models. I have added 1k at the output. This is your R out. And what that did is they took the output that used to be 1.34 volts and now dropped it down to 689 millivolts. Find R out. And what you get is R out is 944 ohms. Again, we calculated 1K, pretty close. To find the input impedance, I'm going to take the output and make that 0 ohms, short the output, and find the current coming in. In lab, I could apply a resistor in series to measure the current. In circuit lab, I can just Click on this guy and see what the current is. Current is 185 nanoamps. So the resistance is B equals IR. 0.1 millivolt produce 185 nanoamps. The ratio is the resistance, 538 ohms. So comparing what I calculated right here to what I measured experimentally in circuit lab, they're similar. 605 versus 538, 19,000 versus 13,000, 1,944 kind of verifies that what we did is correct. That's the common emitter amplifier um, times two, cascading common emitters. Second one, let's cascade a common emitter common collector amplifier. Again, all these are isolated by capacitors, so that lets you set, set the Q point. How you connect them to the outside world doesn't matter at DC. They're isolated at DC. The first stage, the input's at the base, the emitter's tied to ground, output's at the collector, so this is a common emitter amplifier. Second one, input's at the base, the collector's tied to ground, output's at the emitter, this is a common collector amplifier. This is essentially asking what happens when you cascade a common emitter to a common collector? Well, this is where two port models come into play. Here's the two-port model for common emitter amplifier. Here's the two-port model for common collector amplifier. Now, it's pretty easy to tell two of the parameters. At the input looking in, I see 605 ohms. So we know right away that Rn is 605, Ai equals zero. Uh, the other two you gotta work for. So this is gonna be the two-port model. To find A out, what I'll do is apply one volt at the input, calculate the voltage at the output. And this gets a little bit involved. So if this is one volt, this is minus 230 volts. Doing a voltage node equation. At V1, the current left plus current right equals zero. That's V1 minus negative 230 over 1000 plus V1 minus 0.6976. V2 over 605 equals zero. I know that V2 is 0.95 times V1. So substitute, I get one equation in V1. Solving for V1, I get V1 is minus 148 volts. This is 0.95 times minus 148. This is minus 142 volts. So I know that A out is minus 142. 
to find R out. Again, to find the R out for a two port model, you short the input. And I'm not quite sure what this impedance is looking in. So let's apply a one volt test voltage and find the current. If this is one volt, then I know this is 0.69 volts. If this is zero volts, I know this is zero volts. By voltage division, I can find V1. V1 is 0.4346 volts. If I know V1, I know 0.95 times V1. This is 0.4159 volts. I can now find the current. The current is 1 volt minus 0.4159 volts over 4.14 ohms. I've got 141 milliamps flowing. That tells me the resistance. 1 volt produces 141 milliamps. Take the ratio. That's resistance. R out is 7.08 ohms. I can check that in circuit lab. Again, build the circuit. Now let's do four tests to find the different parameters. First, to find the output impedance, make this 10 meg. That's my load. It's something large, basically infinity. Uh, make the input 1 millivolts at 1 kilohertz. And measure the voltage of V out. I get V out as 130 millivolts, so the ratio is the gain. The gain is 130. First parameter. To find the input impedance, I am going to take the output make it 0 ohms, take the input, make it 1 millivolt, and find the current. The current is 1.97 microamps. The ratio is the input impedance. 1 millivolt over 1.97 microamps is 506 ohms. To find the output impedance, I'll take the output and make this 8 ohms. Measure V out. And I get V out is 67 millivolts. So what you got is when the output is open, part 1, I am getting 130 millivolts. I've got my output impedance, what I'm trying to find. I just connected 8 ohms to it, and I got 67.1 millivolts. So find R out to give you that voltage division, and I get R out is 7.84 ohms. So that's my experimental two port model. And notice the two pretty much match up 605, 506. Again, a little different because you know, beta is different for the transistor in circuit lab. Well, I assume 200, circuit lab uses 141. Uh, the gain is similar, the output impedance is similar. That's typical in this class. Calculating, calculated numbers will be slightly different than circuit lab numbers. Circuit lab will be slightly different than experimental. They'll be similar, but different. Uh, one thing to note about this. Again, if you see this, and what I'll do on tests and quizzes is I'll change the circuit around. So if you're memorizing it, you're out of luck. What I might do on a quiz is let's add a 2K resistor right here. Now find the two-port model. Again, if you're memorizing uh, or just looking up on the internet what was the previous solution, you'll get it wrong. you got to go through and recalculate it if we use two-port models. So here's the common emitter right here. Here is a common collector. What happens is over here on the two-port models, I've just added a 2K resistor in series. Let's see, where would it go? It would go right here, 2K. So that conceptually doesn't really change a whole lot during the analysis. If you're doing the analysis, that's not a big deal. 
if you're memorizing equations or are looking for the problem to be solved previously, it's not there. That's kind of what I'm going to do on tests and quizzes. Change up the problem slightly. If you're doing the approach of redraw the circuit, find the two part parameters, it's not a big deal. Um, so, in, with a common emitter, common collector, the last stage is common collector. If you have a common collector, I have that AI is not equal to zero. Usually the stages in the middle are common emitter. So the stage right before the common collector is probably a common emitter. That lets you kind of have uh, three different stages with three different building blocks for building a multi-stage filter. I have a common emitter. It has a high gain, high input impedance. I've got a common base, a low input impedance, high gain, high output imp impedance, and the common emitter common collector. It has a high input impedance, fairly high gain, low output, output impedance. So this will be the last stage if I want to drive an 8-ohm speaker. This will be the first stage if I have a low input impedance, and this will be all the stages in the middle. As an example, suppose I want to drive or build a multi-stage amplifier to take a phonograph needle. Again, in this case, a phonograph is a current source. I've got one microamp, and it has a output impedance of 10 ohms. That's my input. My output is an 8 ohm speaker. What do I put in the middle? And what I want is I want the output to be at least 10 volts. Well, the first stage has a low input impedance. If I make this a 1K resistor, like a common emitter, almost all the current is going to go through the source. Nothing gets to my amplifier. So there's not a whole lot of signal to amplify. I want this to be a low input impedance. There's something small, like uh, less than 10 ohms. The last stage, if I make this a common emitter amplifier, I've got 1,000 ohms right here. By voltage division, I've lost all my signal. So that's not going to work very well. I want the last stage to be low output impedance, you know, as, as low as possible, uh, preferably zero ohms, but, you know, maybe eight ohms. So the first stage would be common base. Last stage is common collector. And in the middle are a bunch of common emitters. They crank up the, the signal. The question is, how many common emitters do I need? Well, that goes back to the requirement. I want to convert one microamp into 10 volts. How many stages do I need? Well, uh, let's just guess one for now. So the first stage will be common base. Second stage, common emitter, just one of them. And the last stage is our common emitter, common collector. Now let's find the voltage at the output. So to do that, well, let's go from here first. Suppose I have one microamp driving 10 ohms in parallel with 4.13 4 ohms. Gives you 2.92 ohms. Gives you 2.92 microvolts. Okay, times 230. gives you 672 microvolts. Times the voltage division. Two fifty three microvolts. That's actually minus sign. Uh, times minus 230 gives you 58.2 millivolts times voltage division twenty one point nine millivolts times minus one forty eight 
3.4 gives you 3.26 volts times voltage division 1.73 volts. So that's kind of the procedure. I go from the input, go through the different stages, amplifier, voltage division, amplifier, voltage division. That's what's nice about the two-port models. It's really not that hard. It's just always times a gain, voltage divider, times a gain, voltage divider. That's why we like these. They're fairly easy to calculate. I want this number to be at least 10 volts, and I don't have it. Uh, so that's what I have. So what I need is another common emitter amplifier. Add another one. So here's common base, common emitter, common emitter, last stage. Uh, add another common emitter amplifier. That'll add another gain of 86. So the output is now going to be 149 volts. I want it to be 10 volts. So a couple of ways to reduce the gain down to 10 volts. Uh, one approach is you might have had this on a homework problem for the common emitter amplifier. If I put the capacitor right here, that gives me a gain of minus 230. If I take out the capacitor, the gain is something like minus 4. So what I could do is, instead of sorting out the entire resistor, short out part of it. At this point, I have a gain of 230. At this point, I have a gain of 4. As I move that potentiometer up and down, I can adjust the gain between 4 and 230. Um, so what I want to do is adjust it so the overall voltage at the output is 10. So this is one way to do it. Just take that last emitter resistor and only short out part of it. That's one way to make the output 10 volts. A uh, second way is add a resistor in series. If I add a resistor right here, again, this is what, 149 volts, too large, uh, meaning that this one is 279 volts. If I add a resistor in series between that and the output, I can drop this down to 10 volts. The problem with that, though, is I'm at 200 volts at this point, 10 volts at the output. I just lost all my efficiency. This is going to be a really inefficient amplifier. It's basically the ratio. 10 over 279, 3% uh, efficient amplifier. So that's not a really good solution. Works on paper. Uh, not the best idea in practice. Instead of putting that resistor and dropping the gain by voltage division right here at the last stage, I could stick it over here at the first stage. Uh, again, that's not a great idea because of signal-to-noise ratio. What the resistor does is it reduces the signal. Uh, in this case, it's going to reduce it by about a factor of 14, which means my signal-to-noise ratio just went to pot. So I don't want to add the resistor at the first stage either. What I could do is add it right here at the second stage or the third stage. I'm losing efficiency, but I'm losing efficiency at millivolts or microvolts. So I'm not using, losing that much power in terms of watts. Just add a resistor to drop the gain to the overall circuit so that the output is now 10 volts. That's the second way to do it. Um, either way works. Another option. What we're looking at is having the last stage being a common emitter amplifier. That's one way to do it, or a common collector amplifier. That's one solution. Another solution is to use a common emitter amplifier and a push-pull amplifier, like we did earlier in the semester. For a push-pull amplifier, the impedance is large. It's like 4 giga ohms for a 602 watt amp. So if this is your common emitter amplifier right here. So here's your transistor, RE, RC, 
here's the output. Uh, this impedance, yeah, I probably need a resistor to ground, like 10 meg. The impedance is like 1 mega ohm, large relative to the emitter resistor, so I don't lose any voltage. Then the push-pull amplifier will then take that voltage and amplify it to drive your atom speaker. Um, so that's uh, another solution. And V plus equals V minus. So there. Third solution. I could use the transformer. Transformers convert impedances as the as the square of the Schrodinger ratio. So if I had a 30 to 1 transformer, looking in, what I see is 30 or 8 <coughs> times 30 squared. 7200 ohms. So this guy sees 7200 ohms by voltage division. Most of the power gets to the, to the load. The problem is suppose I've got one watt, um, eight volts, okay, eight watts going to the load. If this is eight watts or eight volts, this is 240 volts. So if you see a stereo with a transform in it, in it, or it's a very heavy uh, stereo. Inside, you're going to have voltages on the order of a couple hundred volts, maybe a thousand volts. You need that because, again, if we're going to have out 8 volts at the output, 30 to 1 turn ratio, this has got to be 240 volts. So you tend to have very high voltages inside. Uh, be a little bit cautious because, you know, those high voltages do bite. That's the third solution. The one that you use is up to you. That's kind of the fun of being an engineer. It's your pick. Do what makes sense. I could use a common collector from my last stage. I could use a push-pull amplifier from my last stage. I could use a transformer from my last stage. Your pick. It's a tool. Do what makes sense. So in summary, with multi-stage amplifiers, you've got a couple building blocks. You've got the common emitter, common base, and common collector amplifier. Each has slightly different characteristics. A common emitter is your butter, bread and butter amplifier. Fairly high input impedance, fairly high output impedance, high gain. Common base has a low input impedance. Common collector has a low output impedance. By cascading these together, I can build an amplifier that can take a small signal and amplify it and drive something that, say, drives an atom speaker. So that's lecture number 16 for ECE 321 analog electronics.